Hello, my name is Istan Fehrvari from the University of Klagenfurt, also affiliated with the Lakeside Labs company in Austria. And in this short video, I would like to talk about complexity in technical systems and how we think we can master this complexity and show some ideas about the future. So what we see is that technical systems are becoming more and more complex. They are composed of numerous components and these components are interacting with each other. And via these interactions, a very, very complex system arises and this makes uh, engineering, maintaining these systems a very, very challenging task. Traditional systems are basically uh, designed in a hierarchical way, like a card house, where one component is built upon another component. And even if we use many uh, safety mechanisms, it still can actually happen that a single failure of a component will uh, cause a cascade effect and a uh, disturbance or a breakdown of a whole system. We think that the idea is to use distributed uh, algorithms, distributed systems, like in nature. In nature, everything is distributed. Look at a swarm of fish, where we see that each fish is simply following very simple rules to be close to other fish, to be really far away from sharks and find the food. But if we zoom out, we see the swarm of fish like one big intelligent entity. And this system is showing very, very uh, interesting and very uh, advantageous properties like scalability, like adaptivity or robustness. So why don't we put this uh, into real technical systems? Well, we can if we find a, a system which we can copy, which can adopt. This we already see as an example with the Firefly synchronization or so-called pulse coupled oscillators, which was uh, adopted from nature via observing the mating rituals of these Asian, Asian fireflies. The problem arises when there is no such system to copy, to adopt. Well, in this case, we need to fix, we need to uh, come up with our own set of rules and somehow tinkle them to, to get the, the result. But it turns out that this is a very difficult task. Each change causes a very indesirable counterintuitive effect. So this is really a very, very challenging task. What we see in nature, it is solved by our evolution. So why don't we use evolution? Well, we have computation, we have very smart uh, computers, we know the theory of evolution. So if we look back, we have 60 years of evolutionary computing. Why don't we apply them? Well, we can. This is a, a great opportunity because evolutionary computing has a very, very uh, long past and can be easily adapted to any optimization or parameter search problems. So look around, download a program, a software, there are so many modules and, and solutions already that are out there. Okay, but which one to take and, and what is the best for me? Each of them uses their own ideas and then when somebody or researcher is using this, he or she will uh, customize the problem or adopt it into one given software. And then this becomes really unusable to other researchers. We think there's a need to unify it and we created a software called Frevo to unify evolutionary computing by reducing these parameters basically to three big major components, the representation of the problem, the representation of the brain of, uh, of the agents, and the representation of the, of the evolutionary computing, the algorithm itself. Basically, a, a representation of the brain is like, a, like an agent in a multi-agent simulation. It can be represented starting from a set of rules, going more like a decision tree or a fuzzy set, and going towards a more biological inspired way, like an artificial neural network. But uh, the possibilities are basically endless. And then if we have this, we simply connect it into uh, a simulator where we can simulate our problem. If we work with robots, then we have physics. We have very good simulators out there. Or if we go to any uh, kind of simulator with game theory or with any kind, then we just simply connect it to Frevo. We think that the most biggest advantage of, of Frevo is the interoperability of different components. So one who is really good in simulation and in uh, algorithms does not need to develop the uh, artificial neural network or the representation itself, just go to a homepage and download it from somebody who is really good at it. So as some showcase, I would like to, to show the variability and the diverse application field what we think uh, Frevo can be used for like uh, game theoretical problems using the public good scheme to uh, evolve players towards cooperation or use cellular automaton 
to reproduce a picture where each pixel was assigned so-called uh, so called brain to interact only with the local neighborhood. And in the end, of course, everybody is now thrilled with robotics. This can be easily used with robotics, connecting to one of the, the famous simulators and then evolve the behavior of the, of the uh, agent and the robot itself. Right now, we have uh, ongoing work on flying helicopters, these drones, and these drones should uh, cooperate to cover a given area and to find a given target. So I would like to encourage anybody who is interested in evolutionary computing, interested in this new way to download this problem. It's really simple. It's written in Java, open source. One can change or modify anything and write their own components, implement their own ideas and share it with, with the other members of a community. You can find it easily on, on frevo2.tk and be part of a, of a community. As a last moment, I would like to uh, give some showcase about the soccer game where we evolved the soccer players following the rules of self-organization to somehow test what are the limits, how can we use this phenomena to reproduce a real soccer play. So basically we used again uh, approximately 500 generations in the evolution, whereas the beginning you can see that these players are very, very uh, simple, they do nothing. But after a while, after some time, we can observe that the components, the agents are starting to show like a soccer play game. They realize what the ball is. They realize that passing the ball is really beneficial. And in the end, they start to cover the field and create some kind of strategy to overcome the opponent, whereas they can lead easily to, to score a goal. Thank you very much.